Hi guys, welcome to my uh, video about Home Assistant. Uh, this is my setup. This is a Raspberry Pi B Plus running uh, Home Assistant Hash.io. It's having a Z-Wave stick by AEO Tech that allows me to integrate with my Z-Wave devices. So I've been playing around with home, home automation for a long time now. I've used uh, Vera, I've used Zipato, I've used uh, SmartThings, which I was very happy with until they upgraded their users forcefully and I had to lose all my you know, home automation uh, rules and device and everything and the support just said, yeah, sorry, you have to add all the devices again. So that kind of ticked me off. And I was looking around for uh, uh, open source and there were two options, open hab and home assistant. Open hab, hab was Java based and home assistant is Python. I have been really happy. It's been over a month now that I've been uh, running this Raspberry Pi with home assistant and all my devices seem to be working uh, flawlessly. All the rules are working perfectly. So let me show you, uh, you know, the dashboard and let me take you through uh, how you configure devices and then create rules. So this video is more about how you can use Home Assistant to create rules to automate your devices and, and your scenes. All right, let's go. Alexa, turn on living room light. Alexa, turn on kitchen lights. Whoops, someone's not allowing me to turn up the heat. Open the door. And in 30 seconds, the thermostat will turn off. Off. All right, guys, this is my home view. So I like to have the, the home view is basically where you see all the rooms in the house and all the devices in the rooms. It took a lot of time to configure all this because it's all code. Uh, it's not drag and drop, uh, no UI to edit the, the configuration. So I have different tabs over here. So this tab is basically the home view where it shows all the rooms. And then I have a thermostats view where I can see just the thermostats in the, in the house and what their current status is. All the lights and fans uh, this tells me everything is off right now all good uh, the doors and windows uh, i have a camera's view so uh, these are my internal cameras in the house and then i have a system monitor view which tells me that uh, uh, what is the status of my raspberry pi right now this is good to know how much processor is being used so you're not overloading your raspberry pi and then your system home assistance system will start failing so all this is looking good. Now, let me tell you that once you add all these devices in Home Assistant, what you can do with them. Um, one of my favorite plugins in Has.io is uh, the app daemon plugin. This allows you to create a tablet dashboard. I, I'll show you that in a minute. And it also allows you to create rules using Python as, as a language, right? So instead of doing drag and drops and making simple rules that like, you know, smart things allows you to do. Other than that, if you're a programmer, you can easily write rules that can be pretty complex. So going into the IDE, IDE is a plugin that allows you to modify the Home Assistant code being inside Home Assistant. And it takes a time, a little bit of time to start up, but uh, this is the best, um, you know, IDE that you can have for Home Assistant. I just highly recommend it. All right, so here's my configuration YAML. Uh, so when I, all my device, most of my devices in my house are Z-Wave. And for that, I had to uh, go and add this configuration entry for my Z-Wave dongle. I use an AEO Tech Z-Wave dongle and I've added out the Raspberry Pi. And uh, this is how I've set up the, the dongle to uh, be integrated with the Home Assistant. So once you integrate your uh, dongle, then you can go into the configuration. You can go into, uh, you'll see Z-Wave over here. Uh, and then you can add your nodes using add node secure or add node. This is for Z-Wave or Z-Wave plus devices. Now, once let's say you add all of them, you can go and check them out in the integration section. Uh, so I currently have uh, two Hue devices and uh, at least 50 Z-Wave devices. So, uh, what I like to do once I add a device is go into this uh, configuration view and 
modify the default names that you have. So when you add them new, when you add new devices, the devices will have climate dot two gig technology CD hundred thermostat underscore two or some something some name which is uh, not doesn't really identify the device, right? So I like to go into this this view and m modify the names so that they're, they're easy to understand on what what the different uh, sensors in the device are. So I have. These are my six thermostats that are in the house. So living room, master bedroom, upper guest bedroom, um, you know, all of these are different thermostats. Then I have an energy meter. Uh, I have a wall moat and I have a lot of uh, doors and uh, window sensors by Ecolink. Uh, these are really good sensors, uh, 25 bucks a piece. Um, I also have the GE switches, on and off switches. Like I have the backyard light left, backyard light right, welcome room, entryway. So all of these are switches that I've uh, replaced in my house, which allow me to switch on and off the, the bulb or the fan. And then I have these garage door openers by Linear. It took me, you know, a while to uh, add them to Home Assistant. Uh, but then uh, once these are added, then uh, these work wonderfully, flawlessly. Okay, so now that all the devices are added, you can go into Home Assistant IDE and you can create rules. So let me show you some of the rules that I've created. I haven't found this flexibility in any other system. I've used uh, SmartThings, I've used Vera, I've used Zipato. Zipato is uh, pretty cool with the, the UI based uh, uh, you know, uh, rules configuration. However, uh, I'm more of a hands-on guy and I like coding. So this has been the best experience once you get the hang of it. So, so the app daemon apps are present here. Here you can create small programs that can control devices for you like the, you can control something at sunrise or sunset or you can control something on motion or you can control it's basically just a, a, a language based uh, you know language based rule configuration for your home assistant so for example my doorbell is automated using um, a motion sensor i have right next to the door so this one says that uh, listen to the state of the motion sensor and whenever the state changes call this function. So here, my rule says that if the motion is detected, check if door is currently closed, check if the door was last closed at 30 seconds ago. This is so that, you know, if I go out of the house, it doesn't ring the doorbell. So that only if the door has been closed since the last 30 seconds and if somebody outside uh, triggers the motion sensor, that's when the door should ring in. So here it, it gets the door status where the door is closed, gets the last door closed seconds, that how, how many seconds ago was the door closed. It gets the, uh, the time that the time should be between 7 and 10 p.m. This is so that, you know, at night if somebody comes in, it, it doesn't uh, ring the bell and disturbs everybody in the house. Um, so, and then this is where if all these um, conditions are okay, then it'll turn on my doorbell and do a ring, ding, ding. So this is a pretty simple rule, right? My next rule is the uh, entryway light controller. I have, uh, I, I basically have two sets of lights outside. One is the main driveway lights and the next are the um, festival lights, right? So my rule is, so every day at sunset, it'll turn on the lights and every morning at sunrise, it'll turn off the lights. However, if my festival lights are connected, then it will turn on the festival lights and turn off the entryway lights. And at at 10.30 uh, p.m., it will turn off the festival lights and turn on the entryway lights. Right? And this is all automated. You know, uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, I know that uh, uh, it doesn't take much to go and switch on or off a switch at 10.30 at night manually. But hey, if a computer can do it for you, then why not? Uh, this one is one of my favorites, my fan controller. So here I have that. This one says that if the thermostat is turned on, then set the fan speed to low, right? So this is pretty simple that I, I basically want ventilation in the room that if there is uh, circulation in the room, that if there is a somebody switches on the thermostat, it should also turn on the fan in the room. You know, this allows you to, uh, uh, you know, circulate heat more evenly in the room. The next which is the most, uh, uh, you know, cool piece of uh, code I've written is that 
if the fan is on and the thermostat is on and the room temperature changes then change the fan speed so basically i have that if the room temperature is between 0 and 68.5 it'll turn off the fan because you don't need it at that time it's kind of cold uh, if it's between 68.5 and 72 it'll turn the fan to low between 72 and 74 it'll turn the fan to medium and if it's 74 plus it'll turn the fan to high so this allows for better uh, uh, hvac uh, in the room right and uh, this one is my thermostat controller this is also a pretty complex uh, you know piece of rule that i have so in this i have multiple things first of all every morning at 8 a.m it'll turn off the thermostats regardless of you know whatever state they are in so this is for that in case somebody forgets to turn off the thermostat when they go to office uh, this thing will turn off the thermostats every morning at 8, 8 a.m uh, the next one is that i have enforced the temperatures that nobody can go go below uh, 68 degrees um, you know when it's uh, um, heating and nobody can go above 72 degrees if it's co if it's cooling so so that you know i try to save some energy and try to save my uh, electricity and heating bill uh, the next one is for energy saving as well that every night if the thermostat is on at 2 a.m and 3 a.m it'll decrease the temperature by one degrees and then at 4 a.m and 5 a.m it'll increase the temperature by one degrees so this helps you save some uh, you know electricity as well as gas as well and then if uh, anyone um, has their door open or the window open it will shut off the thermostat for that room if it's open for more than 30 seconds so you know this I, I don't know of any other system that would allow me so much flexibility in writing my rules and uh, I, I just love it the way app daemon allows you to write rules in python you can do all sorts of different uh, uh, complex rules and i hope you guys uh, also enjoy uh, as much as i have learning the system i showed you how to program the rules but i didn't show you how i actually pass the arguments into the classes basically the device sensors so uh, for example take my door doorbell uh, controller uh, I pass my, uh, so I have the module name listed here, which is doorbell controller. I have the class name, which is doorbell controller inside the, the file. And then the arguments that I'm passing inside, I list over here and the name of the sensor, right? So it becomes very easy to see what sensor I'm passing inside. So instead of saying uh, motion sensor two, I can say binary sensor dot main door motion, right? So this tells me that this is the main door motion sensor. And this was the benefit of renaming the devices in the configuration section that I was telling you earlier about. Hope this helps you guys. Mm, the next best thing about App Daemon plugin is the um, dashboard. So App Daemon allows you to create dashboards, uh, which can be pretty, uh, you know, cool to look at. So let me show you my dashboard that I'm working on right now. So this is my main view and in this what you see is the, the clock, you see the power being used by the house right now. This is my, uh, for, some, for some reason my dark sky plugin is uh, not working right now, I have to figure that out. And then this shows the current, the voltage and energy being used and then these are just my uh, temperatures in the room right now. These are my status of the doors, the main doors uh, like facing outside the main door, kitchen door, garage door and uh, garage door small. And then I have to uh, still um, fix uh, these uh, trackers that this will track who's in the house and who's not. And then I'll have multiple different views for the energy, for, for the doors and windows, for the thermostats. This is still work in progress. So, uh, you know, I should be able to uh, get this done in a couple of days now. Uh, the cool thing about this is that this you can change the skin like I like uh, to have a nice looking skin uh, you can change the skin as you want it looks uh, nicer with you know uh, good skins you'll have to search around for good skins that you like as your taste but one of my favorites is blur light this is like the Apple home kit uh, home kit skin I I will be um, you know I have to fix this skin still because the Transparency is not as per exactly as the Apple home kit that you get, but you get the idea. So I showed you the app daemon. I've showed you uh, app daemon apps and app daemon dashboard. 
I've showed you the history tab. Oh, no, I haven't. So let me haven't. So let me show you the history tab as well. This is a pretty cool page that shows you the status of your uh, devices during the day. So you can pick up any day and you, it can tell you uh, during the day what was the status of the device. This starts at 12 a.m. In the, in the morning every day and then goes on for the day. So right now it's telling me that my three rooms, upper big bedroom, small bedroom and the guest room are open and rest of the doors and windows are closed. That's good. Uh, my garage door is closed as well. That's good. So it gives you a, a you know view of when anything in your house was open or closed or what was this oh current status of the thermostats. So this one is telling me what the temperatures in the different rooms are. And then this was morning. Morning it uh, temperatures climb up. So that's that's uh, what it shows you. This is my uh, energy view. That I have a home energy meter, uh, AEO Tech again. So this tells me that my Basic energy usage at idle is around 350 watts and this is basically the voltage. So this is the history view. So I hope you guys like the video and uh, do leave me some comments if you like it. Even if you don't like it, uh, let me know your critics. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.